One of the really cool things about playing video games now, especially older retro systems, is the different types of accessories that are modern that we can now use with retro gaming systems. And a lot of that is thanks to people like the folks at Brook Gaming. They have their Wingman Converter SD that I have in my hand here. And what this does is it allows you to go ahead and use modern video game controllers like an Xbox or a PlayStation controller with retro video game systems. In this instance, this is for the Dreamcast and the Saturn. Now they are at it once again with the Wingman Converter designed for the PlayStation, the PlayStation 2, and the PlayStation Classic. And that is what we are going to look at here today. We're gonna throw it on the bench, we're gonna see how it fits in the systems, and we are going to do some testing with it. Hey everyone, Gary here with Rock Solid Productions. Thanks for stopping by and checking out what we have here today. I really do appreciate it. What I wanna know here from you today is between the original PlayStation and the PlayStation 2, which was your favorite? The PlayStation, sure, it was a lot of fun. It was a great system, but man, it doesn't get much better for me than the PlayStation 2. Let's go ahead, let's take a closer look. All right, so here on the bench, you can see the Wingman Converter. This is a very small overall box on here. It is designed for, again, the PlayStation 2. It has on here PS2, PlayStation, PlayStation Classic, and shows specifically the controllers that'll work with. PlayStation 5, PS4, PS3, Xbox Elite 1 and 2, Xbox Series S and X, the 360, the X1 and the Switch Pro Controller. Uh, again, has that same basic sort of text on that side. Walks you through on the back that it does have uh, a wired and a wireless option on here, which is pretty stinking cool. Uh, and it looks like there's a QR code down here if you need more product info. So, like I mentioned, super teeny, teeny, tiny box. Let's see how it comes out of the box. Now, I have been critical of Brooke in the past, and we've talked about this, the fact that they have tended to not use or not include instruction manuals. The adapter itself actually does have some heft to it. Uh, that's, that's good to feel. Um, I thought that might have been a display or something. It's a sticker. Uh, on the back here, Wingman PS2 uh, has the model number FCC identification, and we will test fit that in the system in a moment. Inside the little cardboard box, let's see what we have in here. Probably some, well, we already saw the Brooks stickers, so we got some of those, and that's it. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to scan this QR code and see if it gives us a, a set of instructions, because I, I just... It's not too much to ask for an instruction slip sheet. It just isn't. All right, so we're gonna bring in our cell phone here, launch our camera, show options, open in browser. And here it has the Wingman cross-platform. So new generation controllers enjoy classic PlayStation world. Okay, as a video, unboxing, Yep, that's what we needed. Just include this, guys, come on. All right, so uh, shows you the LED connections. Um, notice this supports most brand of controllers and fighting boards on the market. Increasing the number of supported accessories, firmware will be updated irregularly. Each converter is for one controller at a time. Turbo and remap function can only be set in gamepad mode, cannot be set in fighting board mode board. If the controller does not work due insufficient power, please connect the micro USB port to a 5 volt 1 amp charger. Uh, step one, connect to your console, connect to your wired controller, and connecting to wireless controller. Connecting the controller to Wingman PS2 using a USB cable for the first time. Remove the USB cable after the blue indicator is on. Remember, press the PS or home button to start the connection. Okay. On the Xbox 360, to use a 360 controller, insert the receiver to the PS2's USB port. Uh, the blue indicator means that they are connected. So it walks you through the different sorts of um, compatibility that we have here. Turbo function settings, turbo frequency. Uh, you can remap the buttons, you can clear the turbo. Clearing remap functions. Switch the input mode, so it looks like you can do um, PS Classic switch to PC mode, so you can go to an X input or X input to P PlayStation Classic mode. 
um, how do you connect it to the PlayStation Classic? That's what I want to know. So it doesn't indicate how you connect to the PlayStation Classic, which is interesting. So what I'm wondering is if you connect from the micro USB port here into the front of the console and basically this just hangs out. That's kind of what I'm assuming. I wish I didn't have to assume that and that it was just in the manual, but that's what we have to do. Now, I do have my PSONE here, and I call it that because PSONE. I mean, that's literally how they branded the smaller one. My little 3D printed stand there. I want to check the fit. Not a death grip. I mean, it feels, feels decent. Now, one thing I will say is looking on the bottom here, because the way this is kind of curved, you have a little bit more of a gap between the dongle and the system itself, but I don't feel like that's going to inhibit or cause any other issues with connectivity. So what we're going to do, we're going to actually hook this system up to our RetroTank 5X, and we're going to see how this looks. So I have to say overall the pairing process pretty easy. All that I did is I connected the USB-C cable to the USB port on the adapter itself uh, and then connected the controller to it. And the first controller we are testing, testing an Xbox controller. Now, this isn't just any Xbox controller. I got to give props to the gang over at the Pixel Game Squad who sent this to me. Got autographs here from Ricky, my, my heartthrob uh, Riffo over there, and of course, Gabo who farts a lot. So, so far so good for both button presses and the uh, analog stick. So now let's switch over to the D-pad. Yeah, same thing, working pretty good. Now, while I will say I am generally not a fan of Xbox controllers, the controllers for the Series S and Series X, definitely about the best that they have ever produced. Still not as good as the PlayStation controller though. There the rumble just went off, which is awesome. See where this takes us up over here. But yeah, so far so good. I'm I have uh, you know no real complaints. Uh, I'm I'm not feeling any lag or delay or anything along those lines, which is exactly what we wanted. Getting all the apples there. How do you like them apples? So Crash Bandicoot working just fine on the PSONE. We're next gonna fire up a game that. The predecessors were some of the best ever on the NES, but this one, not so good. We're talking about Blaster Master. So up next, we're sticking with the PlayStation 1. This is Blaster Master. We have switched to our DualShock 4 that we have, uh, you check it out here, we've actually installed some custom lights on. I will have that link for you right up there if you want to check out that video. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and dive into some Blaster Master. Now the pairing process, exactly the same. Connected the USB cable initially, it worked, and then hit the home button to go ahead and start playing. Now in here, the options button is reading as the start button. So there's X to get him to jump. Wow, aiming on this is terrible. Does work with both the D-pad and the uh, um, uh, analog sticks. Okay, I had heard this game was terrible, and I don't disagree. The play control is garbage! Wow! That is not anything to do with the, uh, the adapter from Brook. It's just a bad, bad game. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time with Blaster Master, which it's too bad because the NES game was so good. Got him. I mean, overall, this is controlling as well as I think possible. It's just not a great game to begin with. And part of it is the original was, quite frankly, a masterpiece. All right, overall, I would say pretty decent on the PlayStation. Let's now move a generation forward to the PlayStation 2. So I am not a huge first-person shooter fan, but one of my favorites 
is black on the PlayStation 2. Now, I'm actually now using Brook Gaming's own Vivid controller. Same thing. Connect with the USB, disconnect, hit the pairing button, worked like a champ. Now, the buttons on here aren't quite mapped the way that they you would think they should be for a first-person shooter, but, I mean, it doesn't take long to kind of get back into the swing of things here. Whoa, where am I getting shot at from? Ooh, got him in the junk! Yeah, overall, again, I mean, now, the, the challenge with black is the fact that the button mapping is really before first-person shooters really became much of a thing, but, I mean, this is controlling as I would want it to, so there's, I'm going to push forward on the stick ever so slightly, so I can adjust the speed and whatnot of, of how fast he moves, the character moves side to side. Ooh, found someone is up there. Where? Oh, where? Did he go now? Oh, where did he go now? Got him! You are so beyond dead and you kept coming back for more. And this is one of the reasons why I'm not very much of a fan of first person shooters is I tend to die a lot. Ooh. We've got health and ammo. So up next, this is Ratchet and Clank Size Matters. And what I love about this game is the fact that um, it's the same as the PSP game. And that game just plays so well. And this does too, just on a bigger screen, quite honestly. And again, we're sticking with the Vivid controller for right now. We've got a couple other controllers we're still going to try. The DualSense controller from the PS5 and an 8-bit Doe controller here. Now, one thing, again, these earlier Ratchet and Clank games do not control the same as uh, the newer ones. So it's actually using the, uh, in this case, the A button to fire versus the trigger buttons, which, again, it's one of those things that as gameplay went along, you know, we, we learned and, and developers learned what makes for better and more precise gameplay and you know this is something that i probably could remap you know button presses again are feeling good and everything here this is a game that was designed for the uh the analog sticks and whatnot being again a uh i did not realize that that was a, a drop right there so that sucked um was designed for the DualShock 2 controller. How do I get out of here? You know, definitely playing good for what it is, again, considering how old the game is and, and the control scheme that this had from back in the day. More bolts for me and none for you. So here we have Auto Bleem running on our PlayStation Classic. We are still using the Brook Gaming Vivid. Uh, one of the things I want to do is I actually want to go to Ridge Racer because out of the box, you have to use the D-pad. You can't use the analog stick. Uh, but I want to see if it's something that I can use the analog sticks now through Auto Bleem. Okay, analog trigger is not working. But the analog stick is an analog trigger, I mean, shoulder buttons. Oh, this makes Ridge Racer so much better. Holy cow. It's like actually drivable as I hit the wall. Oh, this is so much better than using the D-pad. Not even funny. Oh, it's much more consistent. This is wonderful. A little bit of a power slide coming out of the tunnel. We're on six out of eight. 
right, let's do this. We're going to pause and select and triangle. Exit. Now, there is one final controller I am going to test out on here, and it's this guy here. This is the SN30 Pro from 8-Bit Do. Now, the battery on here doesn't hold a charge anymore, so I'm going to see if I just connect it. If it works... There we go. It is working. So let's do this. Let's go to Rayman. And helps if I hit the right button. Let's go to Rayman and see how this performs as well. Now, I will say Rayman is a pretty awesome game. I actually have it for the Saturn. I don't play it all that much. But I really shouldn't. I think I say that every time when I use Rayman uh, to test a game or something. This is just a great platformer. It, it looks great. It sounds great. It plays great. This is just a great 2D platformer from an era when, you know, everyone was starting to get into 3D. This is actually really, really good. I love the colors, the looks, the sound, and everything. So one thing I will say is I don't tend to talk about 8-Bit Do a whole lot. I know a lot of people wonder why that is, and there's a very simple reason why. Um, I have reached out to them over the years to ask them questions, to reach out for support, and they don't respond. Um, I don't have a whole lot of respect for that, um, which is one of the reasons that I generally don't use and recommend their products. Um, it's one of those where if there's an issue, like, so if I wanted to reach out to them and talk to them, hey, I've got an SN30 Pro, the, the battery doesn't hold a charge anymore. What what can I do? What are my options? I know for a fact they're not going to get back to me, which is really disappointing because it's a good, comfortable controller, but their support just is not very good. So I was using the D-pad there. Let's try the analog stick. The analog stick works terrifically. Hello, Rayman. I'm Batilla. Okay. And it's one of the cool things, too, to remember is the fact that, you know, essentially the, uh, you know, the PlayStation controller was designed to be a variant of the Super Nintendo controller. That's how the Nintendo PlayStation came about. So overall, what do I think of this? Um, I would say if you are the type of person that wants to use specific existing controllers with your PlayStation, PlayStation 2, PlayStation Classic, this is a really good way to do that. I mean, it's along the same lines as their other wingman controllers. They just, they just work. And that's the cool thing about it. Um, I do really, really wish that they would put a quick start guide in the manual uh, or, or in the box. Uh, you know, I, I understand them wanting to keep costs down as much as possible, especially everything's costing more. I get it. Give me an instruction slip sheet, something that tells me just how to pair the stupid controller to this out of the box. Help me with the basic functionality. Don't force me to have to go to a website just for the initial setup that to me screams cheap and I understand cost cutting but there's cost cutting and then there's doing a disservice for your customers and and that's where I quite honestly think it's a disservice the way that they're you know just not putting manuals in with their uh, products anymore I I'm, I'm not a fan of that um, the pairing process overall does work fairly well. Um, and I would say that, you know, the compatibility with different devices is very good. Um, some people may be wondering, you know, this versus like the Retro Fighters Defender. So how I would look at it is um, if you absolutely want to use your... PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, or your Xbox controller with your PS1, PS2, or PS Classic, then, you know, the 
the wingman is the way to go. If you don't care or you don't have one of those to be able to, you know, basically utilize, then the defender may be a better way for you to go. Um, I will say one huge advantage of this over the defender is the defender's D-pad, as we covered in that video, uh, definitely not a strong suit. Whereas with this, you can use whatever control you want, and like the 8 Dill controller, the D-pad, very, very, very good. Um, the Brook Gaming Vivid controller D-pad, again, very good. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where you have options basically at this point so uh, let's go ahead it's time for some final thoughts so there you have it our look at the wingman converter from brook gaming designed for the playstation ps2 and the playstation classic overall like i mentioned you know pretty decent piece of tech throw a manual in here throw a slip sheet in here walk me through at least how to pair my controllers to this dongle leave all the other information on the website i'm okay with that give me the basics on the box or in a quick start guide. It's one of my, my kind of gripes that Brooke has been doing lately. Now, I mean, it's pretty cool though that it does work with so many different controllers. I mean, it works with their own Vivid controller for the Switch. It worked with the SN30 Pro from 8-Bit Do. It worked with the PS4 controller. It worked with the Xbox Series S and X controller. It really does have a lot of different devices that it is compatible with. And like I mentioned, for those looking for something where they can use their existing controllers on their system, this is awesome. Now, if you want to have a brand new controller and everything, that's where something like the Defender from Retro Fighters comes in. Two different solutions to a very similar type of concern there. Now, one thing that this does that the Defender doesn't do is it does give you the option to use controllers which, with much better D-pads. That is one of my, you know, kind of criticisms about that controller. But overall, a decent value, very good performance, and I will have a link down below where you can go ahead and pick up one of these if you do want to do that. Now, if you like what you see here, if you want to see more, as always, make sure that you do go ahead, hit that subscribe button. And if you really like what you see that I do here too, why don't you go ahead, give us a super thanks. That would be really appreciated. And it's one of those things, it keeps us going here each and every day so we can produce more and better content for you. Now, if you are looking for some of the other videos that we've done on other Brook Gaming products and more, those videos are coming up for you right now. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to help support Rockstar Productions and be a part of our community, there's a number of different ways you can do so. First and foremost, join us over on our Patreon page or become a channel member here on YouTube. By joining through either one of those methods, you get early access to just about all of our video content, exclusive content, and a whole lot more. We also give you shout outs at the end of each and every one of our videos. You can also pick up some awesome Rock Solid Productions swag. We've got t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, and more available through our Teespring store on screen right now too. You can also pick up some of our awesome 3D printed cartridge stands, Amiibo holders, Nintendo DS holders, and more by visiting our 3D printer store on screen right now as well. Links for everything will be down below in a pinned comment. If you wanna stay up to date with everything we have going on here at Rock Solid Productions, make sure that you're following us on the different social media networks. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash Productions, Instagram at instagram.com slash Productions GK, and Twitter at Rock Solid Studios. If you're looking to pick this and other retro and modern gaming accessories up, make sure that you head on over to castlemaniagames.com. He has a feature over there called Castle Cash, where the more you spend, the more you earn towards future purchases, and Castle Cash is just like cash. He also offers convenient payment plans for more expensive items over $50. Finally, make sure that you use promo code ROCKSOLID10 when you're shopping at castlemaniagames.com as it can save you up to 10% on most items on the website. Again, thank you for watching this episode and I cannot wait to see you again soon.